look good to me here. Let me take out my, this is my note. Like Tammy has a whole, you know, portfolio and this is what I have right here. <laughs> Whatever. I'm Deborah Crone, for those of you that aren't from the mission, and um, my husband and I, Dave, are the senior leaders here, along with our son, Ryan, our daughter-in-law, Des Ree, have, that you've heard from. Stand up, Des. That, yeah. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I just leaned over and said, hey, do you want to take my spot? And she's just like, no. <laughs> I, um, just a little bit about me, if you don't know me, it's I... Just turned 66. Woo woo! It's awesome. I'm telling you, discount Tuesdays at Ross. Senior discount. Oh, yeah. I was so excited the first time they asked me, Do you get the senior discount? And I'm like, Yes! <laughs> Absolutely. I am so happy about it. And free lemonade at Chick fil A, right? Whoa. It's almost like every other day I'm out doing errands and I drive through there and I'm like, yeah, you're right, free lemonade, you know. <laughs> but I, I celebrate. Um, I've outlived my mother by 10 years. I live out, have outlived my grandmother for at least 20 some years. And um, I, the generations before that, I know I've outlived at least four generations. So every day that I'm alive, I, I just feel like I'm, I'm pulling on. You know, the Lord says there's a blessing for a thousand generations. And um, whew, I'm going to make myself cry here. Um, that we can pull on. Isn't that awesome? I mean, it's, it's real because I'm living it. My daughter-in-law, Des, yesterday gave me a cup, and um, we call each other up into what we're supposed to be. Um, all of us need people in our lives that think we're more than we think we are. Yeah? Have friends, ooh, this, I didn't expect to say this. Have friends that think more of you than you think of you. If you don't, you might have the wrong friends. Just saying. You might be spending your energy and time. I, I don't know why I'm going here. But I think sometimes we as women, we settle. We settle for friendships and, and relationships that we don't need to settle for. And we should be calling each other up. And this is what I got from my daughter-in-law yesterday. Dear mom, we believe in you. We are proud of you. We love you. Be yourself. You are amazing. Because this is one of the, <laughs> just going to say, <laughs> people who know me, this is like my greatest fear in the world. <laughs> is being in a room full of women. <laughs> just being honest here. Oh my gosh, I thought, I'm going to break out in hives. I'm just, I'm just kind of not a, a, a women's conference kind of person. Um, in fact, years ago, about 10 years ago, actually, um, I was invited to be a speaker at a women's conference in Sydney, Australia, and I knew we were supposed to go, but I told him the only way I'm going is if Dave goes with me and he speaks. <laughs> I'm totally honest about that. So I shared some, but, you know, on, to be honest, Dave did most of the speaking because I was just like, I can't. I just can't handle it. I just can't do it. So it's, it's amazing, and I'm so excited to be here. And, and last night, can I, are you okay? You, do you need me just to say I love this and it's just me? <laughs> I'll say that if it makes you feel better. But honestly, somebody asked me this morning, How'd you, how you doing? Because they know me. How you doing? And I said, I didn't feel like running from the building last night. It was so awesome. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I, I, it's, so this is a miracle. Um, I'm... <laughs> 
I am just loving being with you guys. And because I see my life is about transformation. Because I knew once I got transformed, it is available for everybody. And when I live that, I'm like, I am just not okay with playing games. I'm not okay with just saying that's just the way I am. Yeah? And because um, I said that to the Lord a few times, and he said, oh, no, that's not the way you are. It's the way you're living, but it's not the way you are. And I went on a journey with him of him renewing my mind. And like Tammy said, sometimes you have to... The best conversations you have are with yourself and when you're calling yourself up. And sometimes I had to do it a hundred times a day. Of I'm binding my mind to the mind of Christ and to his will. And that he is what is in me, helping me to be me. Today I want to just share with you, and we're gonna, I've got some help here to keep me on track for time. So I know we've got a lot to do. But I want to share with you two I wonder ifs that I've had in my life. A bit emotional here, so it'll be great. <laughs> it's going to be good. My first major I wonder if happened just about 10 years ago. Um, our daughter Amy was 31. She just, we just celebrated her birthday um, just a couple days ago, and um, she would have been 41 this year. She had had some minor surgery, and um, we were heading to the doctor for her checkup, got as far as the garage. She just turned to me and said, Mom, I feel dizzy, passed out in my arms, and was dead. Called the paramedics, and... They worked on her in our garage for a while. Took her to the hospital, worked on her in the emergency room, and came out and told me what no mother, um, everything you're gonna hear is she's, she's gone. Dave was out of town. So I went into the room and saw like they had been so valiantly working on her like it it looked like a war zone in there there was just stuff everywhere and stuff all over amy and in amy and it was quite a sight and um she, but she was gone so i just i just laid on her and held her just by myself there in the emergency room a friend had come with me and um went out to call Dave. Um, and as I was holding her, I felt something coming up out of my spirit. You know, like, it, I felt, I'm going to say something. I'm going to declare something, but I have no idea what it is. I mean, seriously, I have no idea what, it, what, what I'm going to say. And I'm holding her, and what came out is, God, you are so good. I shocked, I was shocked. And I'm like, where did that come from? And the Holy Spirit said, for a year, you've been, you know, when we wrestle with the Lord, a year, almost to the day, he had told me, God, Deb, I need you to understand about my goodness. And I wrestled for it for about a year. Um, I even came home from a walk when the Holy Spirit had told me my, my goodness is increasing. And I walked into the house and I told Dave, hey, did you know that God's goodness is increasing? And he goes, yeah, I don't think it works that way. I think, um, <laughs> and I said, well, that's what he said, so I'm going with it, you know. That's it, Dave and I. We just, and then he went to, to prayer in the scripture and he goes, you're right. He said, he said the heavens declare his goodness and his glory is his goodness, and the heavens are increasing and multiplying still because there's not enough out there yet to, to describe it. So it is increasing. Isn't that amazing? And so for a year, for a year, I meditated on that and grew in that. And so the day I'm laying there on my daughter holding her, what came out of my spirit from the wrestling was, God, you're good. So didn't know how I was going to live through it. 
Dave finally was able to get to the hospital. And we just sat there with her for quite some time. And then the coroner came and said, I'm sorry, we have to take the body because they didn't know why she had died. Um, so Dave and I had to walk out of the hospital, leaving Amy there. So we're holding her hands, walking to the car like it's a dream, and like you're in a nightmare. You know, you don't even, you don't know how your heart keeps beating and you keep breathing. And we about get to the car, and I turned to Dave, and I said, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to live mad, and I'm not going to live sad. I'm not going to live mad, and I'm not going to live sad. I had seen people that had suffered great loss, and there was such a sadness on them for, like, ever. And every time you were with them, you just felt it, you know? And I knew I had permission to grieve Amy, but I wasn't supposed to live the rest of my life sad, but I didn't know how that worked. Like, the, um, is that up there? The strength and dignity, I thought, okay, I can do that, but laughs? I'm like, how do I, will I ever laugh again, <laughs> you know? I was always, I would think, like, I'm so glad I did this or that before Amy died because um, it, it'll never be the same, you know, it'd never be fun. And um, one of the things, we had taken a ministry trip to, to um, where did we go, um, Italy, when Mark and Tammy went with us, and it was a lot of work. We were a lot of meetings, but we had, like, a couple days just uh, that we were able to get away and go into Tuscany for a couple days and just, oh, we had a blast. And um, I think it was the next year when Amy died. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm so glad I got to Italy before Amy died because if I even go, if I go now, it just won't be the same, you know what I mean? I won't really enjoy it. So I had those thoughts of will I ever laugh again? Will I ever live fully and completely? And the Lord just said, yeah, you will. Because you're not going to live mad and you're not going to live sad. And I have lived the truth of the scripture that he uses all things together for our good. He did not take Amy. I had, there was, we had very few people that said stupid things. Thank God. And I'm like, I'm just, like, I'm just going to bap them, Dave, if they say, like, oh, heaven needed her. I'm like, oh, heck no. Like, I don't think so. You know, or God needed her. Or God was, you know. I said, we're not war. And we have an enemy that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. If we weren't in a war, if the, if, okay, this is going to be hard for some of you. If loss wasn't a potential, we wouldn't be in a war. He would say, you become a believer, and then everything is just hunky-dory, and nothing ever ha bad happens. I don't see that in the Bible. I don't see that in every saint that has lived. We are in a war, and we suffer loss. And if you don't realize that, then you're going to blame God for everything that happens. And how can you worship and adore a God that kills your daughter because he misses her? Just think about that. I don't have a daddy that kills my daughter because he needs her in heaven. Come on, let's get real. We have an enemy, and he's out there to kill, steal, and destroy. One of the things he said, Deb, I will use this for your good. And at the moment, I'm, I don't even, I can't comprehend that. Um, but he showed me very clearly about three years, I think it was, after Amy uh, passed, we were asked to go to South Africa to do a conference with, for leaders that were all over Africa, so many nations in Africa, and it was amazing. But we get there. And um, we walk into this uh, field and where the buildings were, and there's just all these amazing people from all over Africa. And the leaders of that conference said, Deb, um, one of our leaders from Uganda are here, and they just lost their 12-year-old son to brain fever. I'm like, oh my gosh. And we would like you guys just, um, we're going to sit them right next to you. Um, because I know you've had this loss, and you know if anybody understands what they need, you know you do. 
And have you ever felt like, I don't know what to say, right? Well, one of the things when you do suffer loss, you know what to say. You just say, I'm so sorry. You have your whole life to grieve, but you are going to live fully. That's what you learn. So I sat by Julie for two days, and both of us as moms that had lost children, we just sat there with our heads straight, but both of us, tears were just rolling down our arms. I was just sitting there, and just tears came. And I'm looking, they're hitting my arms and rolling off, and I glanced over at Julie, and her arms were covered with tears. And you just know, you know, you know what they're thinking and what they're dealing with. But Julie had gone into a very deep depression. And um, every one of her friends, her husband, was quite concerned about it. Because they were losing her. The third day, the Lord asked me to take a pearl bracelet. And he said, give it to Julie, put it on her her arm, and tell her, a pearl is evidence that her beauty will outlast her pain. And I'm like, Whoa, the Holy Spirit's so smart, isn't he? He's, I'm like, I wish I would have thought of that. That's so awesome. Um, so I went that morning and put the bracelet on her, and I said, Julie, I know you can't believe this right now, but your beauty, these are evidence that your beauty will outlast your pain. That night we came to service, and if you've ever been in a service in Africa, it's just something out the, like the whole building is going, oh, 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 and people, like, we, we look pathetic when we try to dance, I mean, honestly. <laughs> just to be real, except for the African lady that dances. Like, she's like, whoa, that's what I'm talking about. Well, can you imagine a whole building of that, and the drums are going, and the, the music, and, and the floor is, you know, j- beating, and it was amazing. And Dave is pointing to the middle of this craziness that's going on. I'm like, I don't know what you're pointing at, you know. He goes, look who's in the middle. And I didn't recognize it, her. It was Julie. I, I honestly did not recognize her. She looked completely different. She got completely diver- delivered from the f- foreboding spirit, from the trauma, and it ch- it, it, she was just changed. Well, a few years later, we were here at the mission, and on a Sunday morning, Dave said, hey, I think you need to tell that story about the pearl. And I'm like, okay. So I got up and just shared what I shared with you. After the service, I didn't know they were in the audience. The, the couple that invited us to South Africa was in the service, and they were sitting right over here, and they came running to the stage. And, they, and the guy, he goes, D- have you heard about Julie? And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, oh, did I say crap? Yeah, I said crap. Because that is what it felt like. Because I'm like, I just told this amazing story. You know what I mean? And now he's going to tell me something really bad happened. I'm like, oh, my gosh, John. What, what? No, I haven't heard about Julie. What happened? And he said a year later, because she didn't want to have any more children. She, I mean, that's how she just like. She couldn't handle, she goes, I, I, I don't think I'm going to live through this. I, I certainly am not going to potentially go through it again. So she wasn't going to have any more children. She goes, a year later, she had a baby girl. Wait for it. And she named her Pearl. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I, like, you know the ugly cry, you know? I, mean, I just started bawling, bawling, because it, it told me, yes, Deb, you have suffered loss, but because you've chosen to laugh at the future without fear and to be you and just to be present, just to be present in the moment, this life was not only changed and saved, but now her whole, I mean, you know what I mean? For generations, things are different. Now, I know I'm running out of time, 10 minutes. Okay, we can do this. Whew. Okay, take a deep breath. Strap on your seatbelt. That was only my first what if, okay? <laughs> Lord, help me. My second what if is 
Um, a few years ago, my hips started degenerating, probably a genetic thing, and I have been bone on bone for almost three years. Ouch! And, um, but I was, a, the, I went to the surgeon finally, and he said, the only, the only thing to fix this is going to be if you do a hip replacement. I looked at him like, no! I mean, if I have a cavity, that's a big deal, you know what I mean? I, I, I just like, no, I don't do that. I'm kind of like, I can power through anything. Dang. Well, I did for a few years, and it got so bad I couldn't hardly function. So the doctor said, he goes, Deb, you're going to be, you're, you know, basically becoming disabled, you know. Like, I couldn't hardly get upstairs. Um, the pain was just, uh, sometimes I would pass out. Because <laughs> I tried one time to kick my shoe up like this. You know how you do in the heel? Well, I, I forgot I couldn't do it, and I was so tired, and I did it. And then I just passed out over my washing machine. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what was happening is I had been bone on bone for so long. Um, uh, ulcers had formed, or cysts had formed on the bone. So then, it, like one broke or something. I don't know what happened, but whew, I just passed out. So anyway, I can get through this. So what, but why I didn't want to have surgery is both my father and Amy died of a blood clot after having minor surgery. Now, having your leg cut off, as David calls it, is not minor surgery. You know what I mean? <laughs> they dislocate your leg, cut the ball and the bone off, and then they drive this stake into it and put a new you know, ball on there. It was so helpful when he sent me a video of what he was going to do. <laughs> Right? I mean, for real, I really don't need to know all that. If we're going to do it, just do it, you know. Lord. But I was really afraid, like, I was going to die. Um, and, I, and I thought, I'll be okay, but I knew what it does to the people left behind. And I couldn't, I just couldn't get past that. So finally, it was just necessary that I did it. So I finally okay, said, okay, let's do this. And he goes, okay, six weeks from today, we're doing it. But I was so terrified. Just a few days later, Tiffany had at, um, invited me to her house for a little party. And uh, the name cards were at our place. And I noticed the people sitting across from me. I could see what the back, that there was something on the back of their card. And I went, oh, I must have something on the back of mine. And I turned it around, and it says courageous. Ooh. This is another, we call each other up. And I'm like, that is the last thing I feel right now, because I'm really afraid. I'm really afraid to do this. About a day or two later, I was in my chair at home falling asleep, and an angel, I mean, I've never had this quite happen before. Holy Spirit sent an angel standing right behind my chair to the side. And as I was falling asleep, this angel of courage was just speaking to me. You will live. You can do this. I'll be with you. And I fell asleep hearing these declarations over me. Slept for like two and a half hours. I hadn't slept for two and a half hours probably in years because of the pain. I woke up and I knew something had shifted, something had changed. The what if had been obliterated, the jackhammer had come. I knew I was different, but I still felt afraid. Does that make sense? I don't know. And I said, Holy Spirit, I know you lifted that terror off of me, but I still feel afraid. And he said, Deborah, I'll never, he said, an act of courage does not require the absence of fear. It requires the presence of hope. An act of courage does not require the absence of fear. It requires the presence of hope. He said, what are you hoping for? And that changed everything. David came home a little while later, and he looked at me, and he said, what happened? Like, it was one of those things, like, I didn't recognize Julie. Something had lifted off of me, and David recognized it. And I told him what had happened. It was so deep and so real. Can't, do I have time to tell? Well, I, I, okay. 
This is, I want to just, this is just kind of weird. I hope none of you are going in for hip surgery like tomorrow. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I had them back to back 10 weeks apart. <laughs> um, yeah. So now I am bionic. Bye, bionic. But I just want to say how real it is, is that when I was in surgery, and, oh, and then I'm reading through the stuff the doctor gives you, you know, to get you ready. And another thing was, and I don't do general anesthetic. And I'm like, what? I must, be, I must have got the wrong brochure. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's talking about removing a mole or something, not my leg. And, um, yeah, I do a, 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 a spinal block, and then we make you sleepy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, so when I had my pre-op with him, I said, I think this is, I got the wrong page. <laughs> I'm like, are you telling me you're not putting me under? He goes, no, it's so much better for you. You know, it's less risky and everything. I go, yeah, but I really don't want to be part of this. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was bad enough, that video you sent me. But now, you know, I get to experience. He goes, no, you're going to be really sleepy. Really sleepy. I'm like, I don't sleep well. <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, I did. They, so they gave me a spinal block, you know, like you're when you're going to have a baby. I've heard of that. Um, and they made me sleepy. Well, the, the surgery is about two hours. Well, about an hour and 15 minutes into the surgery, I wake up. Oh, yeah. So I'm laying on my side because they're doing the, doing the right one. And the anesthesiologist is right there, and he goes, Hi, Deb. <laughs> Are you doing okay? And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. And, and then I'm going like this. Like, my body's moving. I can't really feel it, but my body's moving. And I'm like, it's really loud in here. <laughs> like, I'm hearing this metal on metal bang. And then, at, but at, and at the same time, my body's going like this. And I'm like, is that me? <laughs> they were hammering the thing down into my... Oh, yeah. It gets better. So I'm... I'm and I, and I said, yeah, I think I'm okay. And, um, and then I hear the drill. You know what I mean? Because the bone had gotten so bad that they actually had to do an implant for the socket part. So now they're drilling it on. Just saying. But I was awake for the rest, for 45 minutes, as they finished my surgery, stapled me back together, and I was completely at peace. I was having a conversation with the anesthesiologist. Like, I'm doing good. And then when they reeled me out, I'm waving to my family. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. Now, it's been a road, I'm telling you. You know, you feel like you've been in a car wreck. Uh, two car wrecks, actually. <laughs> but I'm just saying how deep and how wide is the love of God that redeems us from our what-ifs. And he makes us strong. He makes us brave. And he also makes us to be able to laugh without fear of the future. I have something I made for you all that I want you to take home with you. It's a little bag down here, and I'm going to have some ladies come and help me in just a minute. And... I said, if you can come, or somebody, okay, yeah. Oh, great, Kendra. Kendra's going to play a song for us while we do this. What it is, it's um, two pearls and a fleur de -lis. The pearls are to remind you about the pearl story, that a pearl is evidence that your beauty will outlast your pain. I gave you two because I want you to carry them, and, and when you have an opportunity to minister someone else, you can give them one of your pearls. Because that is what we do. We speak courage. It's like we're partners with the Holy Spirit. He's a great encourager. Well, that doesn't mean he comes along and says, oh, baby, I'm so sorry. You're, you know, you're going to be okay. You're not going to laugh at the future, but, you know, you're going to be okay. No. He comes alongside and gives us courage. He's the encourager. And we actually get to be a partner with him that we impart courage to each other. So I want you to take these. One pearl is for you, 
And just be asking Holy Spirit, who's the other pearl for? And then the fleur de lis is it, um, it's really a symbol of, of bravery through the ages. It's that you, can, you have courage. You take courage and you give courage. I would like you to stand. If any of those what ifs pertain to you, have you ever had that thought, will I ever laugh again? Will I ever be able to laugh without fear of the future? Ladies, just hang on just a second. I'm going to have them come and get them because I feel like you need to take action. Or if there's something in your life right now where you need courage. You just need some courage. Just because you're afraid doesn't mean you can't have courage. I still was afraid. But the lack of fear is not required. <laughs> We can even be courageous if we still are afraid. So, Father, for every person standing right now, I just bless them with the grace, the grace, the grace that their beauty will outlast their pain. They can take courage for their future. And even if they have fear, the fear will not stop them. It will not keep them bound it will not keep them from moving forward. It will not keep you from living life fully. You will not need to be known as a sad person. But you can grieve if you've had a loss. I'm not saying you can't grieve. You have your whole life to grieve. It's not a, a lack of grief, but you don't have to be sad. You can live fully. So I have enough of these for every one of you that are here. But first of all, the ones that are standing, I want you to come, come forward and take one of these and just come into agreement that, yes, Lord, this is for me. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, he's so in love with you. He's so in love with you, he's so in love with you. He's so in love with you, he's so in love with you, he's so in love with you. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. Okay, every one of you, if, if this does not pertain to your immediate circumstances, I want you to come and get one because we all, you know, we live life and it just gives you courage and hope. And ask the Lord, like, is there someone that I need to minister this to? And the Lord will show you. It's powerful to be able to give each other courage. Thank you, Father. Let him hold you in his arms let him hold you in his arms today. Oh, Abba loves you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, not trial, tribulation, angels or demons, famine. Nothing can separate you from his love. Everyone received one. Did ever, anyone get missed? We still have you. Thank you. Let him love you. Let him love you deep down in your soul. Receive the 
Father's love today. Receive it, receive it. It's going deep, it's going deep, it's going deep, it's going deep, it's going deep. He's so in love with you. He's so in love with you. He's so in love with you. Just one glance from you and he's undone. He's so in love. Just Thank you, Lord. Glance. Father, Just we are glance. so grateful. We are so thankful for your generosity to us. And I pray over every heart here, whether we've suffered loss, no matter what the loss is, Lord, you are giving us courage to live our lives fully. You're giving us the courage to laugh without fear in the future. We're choosing to be us. We're choosing to be free. Thank you, ladies. Thanks for listening. And oh my gosh, so many wonderful things that he has done. Amen.